Hello everybody, this is Albert from Mesa Mundi and D20 Pro. I just want to give you an overview of our Fog of War system we're working on. Uh, this is the stuff that we had planned for 3.6, uh, the 3.6 release of D20 Pro, so you'll be seeing this in the very near future. What we have going on here is we've got a couple of different Fog of War region types and light sources. Light sources can be attached to a character, such as this one here. As you can see, I moved this guy around. In the GM view, you can see it updating in real time. Um, and then the Fog of War regions that we have are uh, walls, which are these orange bordered ones, and the blue ones here are called masks. We have an additional type called edges that I'll get into a little bit later. Walls literally block light, no matter what. So if a character finds himself in a region, it will simply fail to render light at that stage. The whole point is that if a character enters a wall, we don't want the light to penetrate, to potentially reveal something on the other side of a wall, something along those lines. So walls disable lights for creatures and tokens that have light sources attached or a light source that is passed into a wall for any other reason. Uh, in masks, masks are basically our workhorse for the Fog of War system, shadow casting system. A mask is what I suggest using for any traversable area. A mask allows for light to eat away at it when the mask is in the uh, in the shown state. So when we toggle visibility, for instance, uh, if I come in and I toggle this to hidden, to hide, then you'll notice over in the player views that the uh, fog of war disappears. Uh, we do have some artifacting happening right now involving outlines. We are debugging that. So that'll get fixed. You'll see that throughout this demo because I'm using outlines to make things a little bit more obvious. All right, so let's keep going. So in addition to adding in the new types, we've upgraded the game tools to support a light panel. And the light panel allows you to create new lights. It also, clicking on a light center to it, uh, this character actually has two light sources attached, a shadowy and a bright. If we go in and double click on this, we can actually assign a color. And so let's say that we want his bright light to supply a slightly yellow light. So now if we refresh that, out to the players, passing this out, you'll see that the players now see two different levels of illumination. The section out here is the outer illumination, this is the inner. This is just a nice way to be able to map the uh, fall off for bright illumination and shadow illumination. It's not a necessary thing, you can use one light source, and we do have plans to add in gradations and, uh, and texturing, but those aren't in right now, so I'm showing you what we can do with what we've got. The mold panel, which is was previously the manipulate, allows you to do all of the normal things you used to be able to do, such as to edit and scale and rotate, all those fun things. And But in addition, it now shows you, when you select an object, uh, these little white lines. These lines represent what are called normals. Normals are related to how an object interacts with light. A normal facing outward, in this case, will prevent light from entering. Uh, in a mask has the unique property that it will prevent light from entering no matter which direction, and a wall has that as well. So, for instance, we toggle visibility on this. We go over to mold here. And we select this guy and flip the normals so they're facing inwards. And what I did is I pressed U, or you can click on the invert button. Uh, flipping the normals will not prevent the light, or will not allow the light in, uh, even though, you know, you flip the normals. The normals are very much relevant for the edge uh, objects, which again, I'll, I'll cover shortly. So we have, uh, we have the ability to select what type of object it is through a dropdown, wall, mask, or edge, or with an object selected, you can click on the buttons here, or finally, you can press the G key to cycle through the types and that won't update the UI while I'm in it, but it updates the object type. And the border colors are, will make it obvious which type of object you've converted it into. The, the other thing that you can do is you can select more than one region. So I could, for instance, say, let's grab this block of regions here and make them into walls, which they already are, or masks or edges uh, as you see fit. You can also invert them uh, arbitrarily as well. So 
where edges do come, or where normals come into play uh, most often is certainly in how walls interact. If we flip the normals on this wall, for instance, you can now see that it will paint the light source over top of the wall. Uh, so this can be an interesting tool. Uh, again, this outline here is because the light source actually is huge, and so it's actually painting the outline of the region that it sees. We're, we're fixing that. So uh, outline aside, as a matter of fact, let's just go into the shadowy and we'll remove the outline, and then we won't have to worry about that visual artifact being confusing. Um, let's go back over to mold. We're going to flip this one back around and I'm going to show you uh, one of the other really neat things we can do. So in addition to being able to change your regions and set up your fog of war so that way it responds uh, or eats away at light, as the GM allows it, you can also set up to have fog of war react to lights. Uh, some of you GMs out there may be familiar with using Fog of War reacts to players. Basically, this means that when a player challenges a Fog so if I move this character around right now with just the react to players, the Fog of War region stays hidden until the player challenges it. That means that their token enters the area, at which point the GM is prompted to say yes or no. And in this case, I'll say no. Um, if you enable this fog of our regions react to lights, what happens is any mask in which the player let's get out of this any mask in which the player's light source would intersect, which with this very large light is going to be more than one mask, uh, it will prompt for fog of war reveal, meaning that it'll go from being hidden to show. And that doesn't mean that they can see. What it means is that as they navigate, the fog of war, uh, the mask will reveal the area that they've traversed or where their light can shine through. The walls are still creating shadows and blocking light. Now, additionally, what you can do is, let's get out of this real quick. Yeah. Uh, so I can go in here and I could set this type for the sections, let's say that the characters have explored the, the upper edges of this valley, we can convert those into masks and say show. And now the player's light source will reach further into the valley as they traverse. So there's a lot of fun things you can do just with very simple fog of work uh, for shadow casting. And let's, but let's look at a much more common scenario, which is the uh, dungeon. So let's go to the studio basement. So here we have our studio basement. And what we've done, I'm going to actually turn off the react to lights and uh, I'll leave the react to players on. Oh, I should state very quickly, you can turn on the auto show reactive fog of war regions. If you have lights enabled and auto show as the players traverse, it will simply toggle the show or hidden property for masks as you move along. Um, all right, so let's turn those off though, just so that it'll make it a little easier for us here to manage the demo. And so what I've got is a couple of characters. I've got a character here assigned to player one, so this character. And I have a second character here assigned to player two. We've got a 10th level wizard and 10th level fighter. So what's going on is the, you'll note that on the wizard's view, there is an additional blue outline, uh, which is very dim. Let me change that color for this character's vision. So we're gonna change this to be uh, orange, we use orange. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's use orange is actually used for one of our light shapes, so we'll just use white. It'll, it'll be fine. All right, send that over, and we'll keep moving along. All right, so now you can see that this character, the wizard, is able to see both the light source from his friend and have his vision radius also outlined or indicated. Meanwhile, the fighter has no clue what the vision properties of his friend are. 
And the way that that works is in this light panel, so under Game Tools, Light, you can toggle the visibility of a light source. And in addition, you can attach a light source to a character or an object in the scene. So if I create a light, the light just exists and isn't owned by anyone by default. An unowned light source or GM light source is visible to everybody, um, so long as it's green checked. If I uncheck it, it's only visible to the GM and then can be made visible to the players when the GM wants. Or you can attach a light source to a character in the scene and by doing so, it'll move the light source over to the character's location and perform light according to that character's visibility. So let's get rid of that light for now. Let's untether it and let's remove it. So I'm clicking on the light and pressing the delete key to remove the light. All right. <clears throat> so now as we move this character, the, the fighter, you can see their light source updates. Uh, this is on the GM panel. Uh, for players, the update to movement occurs after they let go of their character. It passes it to the GM. The GM processes and sends it back. Right now, because I'm running all this on one system with three clients, uh, all consuming a fair amount of memory, I've got another map to show you in a moment, um, the round trip time is a little slower than, than we'd like. And there are certainly bugs that we're working out of the system as well. But here you can see that player one, the human, does not see, can no longer see their friend, nor can they see the vision radius of their friend, whereas the uh, the wizard is able to see both the vision radius of the fighter as well as their own vision radius. We don't have the logic in place right now to handle hiding the additional section from the fighter, uh, but that is certainly in the cards. We just, there's some... There is definitely some, some some considerations, excuse me, that we need to be able to make as to when do you see a friend's light source versus just simply can I draw a straight line without something occluding. So that being said, for now, we're erring on the side of you see more and we'll move to uh, a configuration model where you can enable uh, some of the rules for how vision is, is being portrayed. So as this character moves down the hall, you can see that these pillars actually hide light and uh, or cast shadows. So these green perimeters are edge objects. Edge objects are pretty cool because what we've done with edge objects, and these are still very much under works, but an edge object, if you invert the normals, so you put the normals facing inward, an edge object allows light in and then blocks light going out the other side. If we invert it and send that over, so that way the normals are facing outward, what happens is the light source hits the edge object and then light doesn't penetrate inside of it. So what's neat about this is that you can create objects on top of your art on a map that allow you to see what's underneath yet still create shadows, hide creatures, and all those fun things as well. Um, now, for the time being, we have, for doors, we have added in, uh, we just are using edges, but we actually have a door type that we're working on right now. So, but let's, uh, let's talk about doors real quick. So if I open a door, or I should say, let me close that. If I select this region and show it, and I refresh, while the door is closed, the door is hiding light, light doesn't penetrate. But as soon as I take this door and I show it, you'll see that the light penetrates the door and passes into the room. So when this character moves forward, opens the door, their light passes into the room and reveals the bad guy. In addition to that kind of behavior, we can also use behavior where you can have a creature who has a light source associated with it. And that light source, let's just verify. Yeah. So what happens is that 
Let's actually go to here. Let's hide that again. Um, so what happens is this creature has a light source. The light source is hidden from the players. Let's zoom out some here. So you can see we, we even move this guy down here. So we have two light sources that are overlapping. You can see the, the rays cast from the much larger light source and it's casting into that area. Now, when this character moves forward with his door open, his light source will bleed out into the hallway and you can see that it's, it's eating out this way. If we then go through and we enable this room, oops, switch over to visibility mode. We enable this room, then you'll actually be able to see this creature's light source and the room it eats away and all of that. Again, some of the logic of how to handle this is still being resolved, but this gives you an idea about the kinds of complex situations we can enable or disable for lighting. Uh, and just to give you a better idea about what all this stuff can look like, we'll open up all the doors and And so here you can see the, the full lighting uh, as it's being calculated. So this, the fighter only sees his light source and the light source that's tagged as visible, which is the one down here. Um, the wizard is able to see all three of the different kinds of light sources, the fighter's light sources and the uh, NPC light source down here. So the, the results of this are, are pretty clean in that regard. All right, let's get out of this and I'll show you one more map and uh, some of you may already be very familiar with this. This is our crawl map. It is a very large space with a lot going on. And what I've done is I've gone through and I've tagged all of my walls, as you can see from the orange, uh, as wall objects and gone through the rooms and whatnot and tagged them as masks. Uh, it probably took a total of about 10 minutes to go through and just sort the layers into the, or the regions into the right types. Uh, for you know a complex legacy map, that's that's really not bad. Um, <clears throat> I didn't go through and do any modification to the map, so just to call this out, other than to change the region types um, and to enable shadow casting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to go to our options. We're going to go to judge. And we're going to enable uh, react to players, react to lights, and auto show reactive fog of war. So now what will happen. Let's bring the players over to the same map. Again, this is a very large map. Uh, it has very, uh, very large graphics as well as being a very large space. Uh, so we have a monk here who has a light source who's currently not owned there. Let's give him ownership. So player one will be the monk and we'll say that uh, player two will be this ranger back in the back with the yellow light source. There we go. So now, as this character moves around, you can see his light source actually triggers auto-reveal or auto-show of hidden areas. However, the actual visible range that the character is able to see is not the full range of enabled Fog of War regions. But what this means is that as this character moves around, um, we're able to actually get updates as to the, the areas within radius. And right now we're doing the whole radius. We're not doing the, the clipped polygon. So that means that we're getting some regions that probably we don't need to worry about at the moment. Uh, that That's a refinement that we'll address in the near future. But what's cool is that this really enables your characters to travel around a space and interact with things at, at, a, at a staged rate, right? So your character can't see into the darkness over here so as they move forward, it'll reveal ahead of them. Uh, the downside to using this auto reveal would be that if you have a character who does move their, or a player who moves their character into a region often 
you know, nowhere land that happens to be, uh, for instance, if your player moved off into this room, it would trigger the reveal for everything in that room and all around it. And so you have to be cautious, but at the same time, this can this can speed up play. Uh, it depends on the kind of play style and you know how much you trust your players to only go places where they're supposed to. So, but in addition to having uh, having this, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show you guys this map is I've set up a set of portcullis over here. We're going to just move this character over to it. Um, using a series of small edge objects. And this does take a moment to, to refresh because it's going through and doing all that math a couple of times right now on my system and technically, you know, on, on my system multiple times. Um, so it hasn't actually finished updating here. But I will show you and it will be cool and then I'll, I'll stop talking about it. So uh, here we have, you can see the light casting through the portcullis as it goes down the stairs and reveals the monster into the next room. Uh, you can see how this interacts. There is, a, there is a bleed, this is in my Fog of War objects from when we built the map ages ago, uh, right here. And that's actually causing light to be visible simply because there is no Fog of War region there. And so this map does have some holes in it. Uh, this, this map was made before we had any of these snap to knot, snap to grid type features. But here you go. So this allows for the character to uh, very quickly be able to ascertain lighting. You can have complex lighting situations. Uh, you can see here as I move this light source around, um, I'm doing it this way because then it doesn't go through the update cycle, which is where our performance bug is. Um, as we move to the other side, same sort of thing. You can see that the light source permeates and penetrates the fog of war and responds accordingly to the geometry. And of course, is non-existent when we move into the wall. So that summarizes our fog of war uh, with shadow casting. And we are definitely still in the works. There'll be more to come. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.